Today we're going to discuss my natural hair coming up. So I'm going to chat about my natural hair today. You can see that it's very short. It's summertime outside and in Ohio we do get quite a bit of humidity. My hair is very fine and uh, curly and frizzy and it won't be long here before it starts to really get kinky and just frizz out all over even though it's very very short. So I keep it short for a variety of reasons. Number one, it's easier to manage. Number two, for my wigs, it's easier to get better coverage with my biological hair when I start to wear short wigs and pixies. So the main questions that I get about my natural hair is, Taz, it looks thick on the, on the camera. You know, what is the state of your hair loss at this time? And since I began making videos, um, I have had very few shedding periods. I may have had one or two in the beginning. I haven't had one in a couple years. I don't really know why. I'm gonna go ahead and link up the video that I put out many years ago about my own hair loss journey, how we feel it's probably a PCOS condition, you know, just hormonal fluctuations that are affecting my hair loss, creating a condition called chronic telogen effluvium. That's where most of your hair, 80% uh, of it, in fact, would go into the resting phase all at the same time. So during these bouts of shedding, I knew it was coming because my scalp would start to itch real bad, and then it wouldn't be but a week later, and I would just start to see the fallout, and it would fall out at the follicle. Um, I could actually see the follicle on the hair that was coming out. So, um, you know, I've been through every doctor, dermatologist, pills, potions, none of it worked for me. Um, in my condition. I wasn't able to take any kind of hormonal birth control pill or anything. It always made me very, very sick. Um, I've just had a hard time with hormones all of my life. And uh, I think that that has, an, has had an impact on my hair. Most of you know that I have had a partial hysterectomy due to some cystic ovaries in the past. I think that has also contributed to some insufficiency in terms of hormone balance, which went on to create some, uh, some, some of that chronic telogen effluvium that I'm describing. Um, now that I am older, so I'll be 52 here in a couple of months, and now that I am older, I feel like maybe uh, there's something, there's a different hormone story that's going on in my body right now, which may, uh, may be contributing to less shedding events. You would think that the opposite would be uh, happening right now as I approach menopause. So I'm, I, you know what, I'm still cycling regularly, so I know I do have a, uh, some sort of progesterone, estrogen uh, in my system at this time. But I think that it's uh, the gradual decline in some of that hormonal activity may be helping me out some. Go figure, that's probably the only positive thing about perimenopause. Um, I just, you know, the doctors all said to me, you know, you're probably going to have an earlier menopause because of this partial hysterectomy. Well, you know, you would think that it would be slowing down right now <laughs> if that were the case um, with the average age behind me. So. Um, I feel like that that's probably the reason why I haven't had the major shedding events. Is my hair beautiful? No, it is not. Um, it cannot grow more than just a couple of inches. Um, it's full of calyx, it's very frizzy and fine, and it's very thin in a lot of different places. So wearing wigs is definitely on my radar for the rest of my life. Even if I grew, grew a full head of miraculous hair right now, I think I would probably still always wear wigs. Wigs have changed my life and they have become so much fun. And it's so awesome to be able to change up my style, be who I want to be, and just totally not worry about the weather and how that's affecting my own natural hair. I think every woman should have a good wig in their wardrobe for those kinds of days. And I just, I'm just having too much fun and I'm, I, it's just been such a value add in my life that to live my best life would be to have wigs in my wig closet. The second question that I get a lot about my natural hair is asking me to do a demo on how I, how I cut my own hair. I have not seen a hairdresser in five years. Maybe it's been over five years, you kind of lose track. Uh, so I invested in a good set of clippers 
and I have some hair scissors. The clipper set that I use is a, a wall clipper set and it has color coded guards. Um, I do have this listed in my Amazon shop with the links below if you expand the description box. So the wall clippers have just been a godsend for me. It was, there was a little bit of a learning curve there when I first started. When I first started, it wasn't quite even because it was very difficult for me to see in the back when, I'm, when I was doing what, you know, I was using the clippers. So I wore a lot of headbands after I would get done trimming up my hair. I wore headbands to cover up any uneven spaces and it was only a matter of maybe a week that um, it looked it looked presentable again. But I gradually learned how to do this and so I used uh, just a square handheld mirror so that I could see behind me and then I learned to also to do a couple of things with my left hand so that I could get on the left side of my uh, of my head to do this. So I would urge you that if you uh, if you do have your own bio hair, but you uh, really like to keep it short for your wigs, or it just takes a minor trim here and there, and you don't really want to spend the money on a hairdresser, I think you can learn to do this yourself. So this is the wall set that I have, and you'll see that it's color coded according to the size of the guard that you want. When I first started to do this, I just wanted it really shaved up the back. I was wearing a lot of uh, short wigs and pixies, and I always selected the um, the 3 8 inch, which was the royal, the royal blue down here at the bottom. And so today I went up to the orange, which is a half inch guard. So I would just apply, I would apply the guard, okay? So the first thing that I would do is I would go all over the sides with this half inch. So I would go up the sides like this. And as I, as I roll up on it, I would kind of fade out a little bit towards the top uh, because that would just give me, it would just blend a little better because I keep the top a little bit longer and I'll show you what I do with that later. So I would go up all over behind my ear, all over the back. And you can see my back is a little bit shaggy right now. It does need a little bit of a trim, but um, I would go all over and I would go up to about here and just kind of fade out on it, okay? So once I went all over with the half inch guard, I would take I would take off the guard, and this is just the clipper. And then I would sort of just square off my sideburns there, and I got really good at going around my ear with no guard, okay, just to make a nice tight line. The, the other thing is I have a very long uh, neat a biological hairline at my nape. And so that was more or less the trick is to sculpt that in a way um, that made it look presentable um, without being able to really see what I was doing, you know, just using that mirror. So I would, I would basically just come in, trim all the way down behind my ear and square it off at the bottom. I would do the same thing all the way around. So I'd actually have to switch went and do my left hand so that I could get the left side of my hair, okay? So that's trimming it up all over. I would also finish off with a little bit of just a handheld razor that you would shave your legs with. And I razored any uh, extra hair that, was, that came down below that line, okay? So at that point in time, I'm done with my clippers. And I would finish off with just scissors. I will scissor the top. Now I have to say, that curly hair is a lot more forgiving with mistakes or unevenness than straight hair would be. Um, so you play your situation by ear. But you see where it starts off a little shorter here and works its way to the longest part right here at the front. And you'll see why I was never even able to wear bangs even if I had lots of hair there at the front just because there's so many calyx. I've got a big widow's peak. Um, but basically what I would do is stand in front of the mirror and uh, sometimes I'll use a comb, sometimes just the top of my hand, but I'll just scissor the top, okay? I'll scissor the top, and like I said, on me, it does not have to be perfect because it's just so forgiving because it's so curly. In fact, I think that's why I've had such success with being able to accomplish a very presentable hairstyle with my natural hair all on my own. I don't color it anymore. I used to color it quite frequently. Um, I colored it a lot before I started to wear wigs just so it would cover up some of the 
shedding areas, um, the really, really thin areas. The blonde really did, did camouflage it well for me. The problem is it just grew in again so quickly. Um, I think the human hair grows about a half of an inch a month. And you know that's substantial enough to be able to see rooting, of course. And then, you know, so I had my hair colored every four weeks and it would be some bleach involved in a coloring process and that certainly did not help the condition of my hair. But I was too afraid to quit all of that because I needed that camouflage effect. So how, you know, when I was going through that hair loss, it, it was just devastating because, you know, I'm a solutions person. I don't, uh, I don't whine and complain about a problem. I find a solution. And this particular problem did not have a solution. And I wish, I only wish I would have, uh, I would have seen the light a lot sooner. Stop spending your money on the potions and the pills and the expensive shampoos. Um, I mean, I went out there with some treatments. At one point in time, I was when going to the health food store, I was buying some essential oils, I think lavender or rosemary. I think it was rosemary or lavender or maybe even a combination of both. But I would get up a half an hour early every morning so that I could take that essential oil and rub it into my scalp. It had a very strong smell, and um, even after I washed it out, it wasn't, it just, you know, it wasn't ideal at all. But those are the lengths that I would go to, um, to, to just to help myself. And, you know, this, this stuff that I've got is genetic, like so many of you, and you know, with alopecias and things. Uh, now, it, if it's medically induced, like chemotherapy and so forth, your hair can be expected to, to grow back. It may not be exactly what it was before you entered chemotherapy treatment, um, but I can't speak to that experience. But I know with the alopecias, with the genetic types of um, female pattern hair loss, uh, baldness, and receding hairlines and things like that that are the main, the main issues, um, even menopause will cause some hair thinning and so forth. So that's why I firmly believe that every woman should have a wig that they love. And you can reach for it for different reasons. You don't even have to wear it at all. I mean, they're little works of art just sitting on the heads. Uh, but it's just another tool in your tool belt to live your best life, to feel beautiful. And, you know, for a lot of people like me, it just really lifted some of the social barriers that I felt because of my hair loss. It allowed me to be myself. My authentic self was able to come out when I didn't worry about being judged over my hair loss. I've learned a lot. And as a matter of fact, you know, so hindsight is 2020. If I had to go back, I would have, number one, I would have started wigs earlier. I wouldn't have wasted all of that time uh, and money on, on things that were not working for me. I've been on the other side now. I have beautiful wigs to wear, but I'm still the same person inside. I'm just able to let it out a little bit more. So I wish, I really wish that when I was going through the hardest times when the hair loss was profuse, that I could have adopted um, a more uh, sympathetic inner voice towards myself, a more compassionate voice towards myself and not worry so much about what other people think. Um, just to be my true self, to let that out despite the hair loss. I, I really wish I could go back because looking back, I've, I missed so much. Um, I miss so much just being self-absorbed. You know, if I had a program at school for my kids, um, you know, I would worry about, you know, how my hair looked. Um, it, it really bothered me and I shouldn't have let it bother me and if I could go back and do it again I still would have worn wigs but I wouldn't have cared as much I would have gotten out of my own way I would have held my head high no matter what the situation was on my head I would have enjoyed my children and had a better social life if I could just go back and do it again so I don't know if I'm ever gonna color my hair again I may decide that I wanna to try to grow it out just a little bit more. Um, but right now, I, um, I can go out and look presentable in this hair. I don't prefer to. It's not because I'm afraid though. Um, it's just because I prefer to wear wigs. I love wigs. I mean, wigs that even make a no makeup day look amazing. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I cannot stand not wearing a wig. 
I feel a little bit naked, like I've left something behind. You know how if you leave your cell phone at home when you've gone out, or you forget your watch, uh, or if you're used to wearing a hat or, and you forget that, you know, there's just those things that you come to rely on, the secure feeling of it, and wigs are one of those things for me. So I'll keep you posted now and again on my natural hair as I move through the perimenopause and hopefully one day I'll get to menopause <laughs> um, and be able to report any changes that I see. Again, my intuition, my gut feeling is that uh, part of my success in the last few years are number one, I think, I think my hormones are in a different place. Number two, I, I don't abuse my hair anymore. I don't torture it with color and really strict styling, lots of tension and things on the hair because that can definitely make it damaged and break off as well. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you cut and color your own hair if you have biological hair? You know, what is your situation? And did this inspire you to maybe check into getting the skills that you need to manage your own hair underneath your wigs? Everybody have a great day. We'll see you next time on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.